Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome back to How to Paint Watercolours with me Colin and I've chosen what I think is going to be an autumn scene with the cooler grey blue skies and a few little clouds and as you can see I've stretched my paper and I'm just leaving a very thin film of water on it around the edge take any excess water and moisture off the edge so there are no runbacks I'm going to get straight in with a mop brush this is a mixture of uh, Sievers blue and cobalt blue this is a mixture of Sievers blue and cobalt blue once again but this is the a thicker darker mixture and we're just going to darken the top cobalt blue and light red for the clouds and I'm just working the this paint in <clears throat> and I'm not bothered if it turns grey it would actually help a little bit give some movement I don't want this to creep into the water at the moment so I'll keep this dry that's just a paper towel Maybe just one in this corner. Then I'm just taking a scrunched up kitchen towel. I'm going to lift out some streaks in between the clouds, and I'm not. Uh, I'm just rolling this kitchen towel and doing nothing special with it. This is an even thicker mixture: cobalt blue, Sievers blue. With just some light red in it. I'm just going to test it first and I'm going to give the indication of some trees here. I'm leaving a lot of big gaps as this will tend to spread. Bring some across the bottom here I think. Just watered it down while the whole painting is still wet. Now we do leave this to dry off for about 5-10 minutes but what I will just do is just soften the bottom end off of these clouds before we leave it to sort of have its way and dry off a little bit. The same here, just soften the bottom edge. <clears throat> okay now we need to leave this till the shine goes off the paper and then we can put some tree trunks in and they won't spread too far. Just lifting up just a bit more paint out from around these trees although I've forgotten one thing before we leave it some burnt sienna and a little bit of cobalt blue and I want some bushes at the back of these trees actually and that's what I nearly forgot just brighten that area up just one or two patches of just straightforward burnt sienna Pulling this in as well. Okay, so we're going to leave this for a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm just going to test this now. I've just left it about five minutes, and I just want to, even though these are going to be misty trees, look like a little bit of interest in parts of them. This is the same mixture for the trees, the cobalt blue, a touch of light red in it, some Sievers blue. Cobalt blue, light red, once it's dried off a little bit. And I'm just going to strengthen the underneath of the canopy. One or two tree trunks. softening out any hard edges taking some of the same colour just bringing in what could be 
some bushes. Dropping in just a little bit more of the colour along the bottom. Coming back over here, just taking a bit of straightforward cadmium yellow and I'm just going to add the next row of bushes but I want these to be more clearer. We must wait for that to dry. Yellow ochre and a touch of light red in it. To that slightly stronger mixture, more light red in it. Straightforward burnt sienna. Pulling it down with the uh, fall of land, how the, how the land is shaped, and into that some burnt sienna, cobalt blue, and along the bottom for a dark edge, Prussian blue and sepia. And now I'm going to allow this to drift up. Rewet the bottom of your paper so that it does not dry out, but do not touch where you've painted. And I want the top part of the water dry. So now this has to dry a little bit. Just strengthen up this bottom piece. Okay, we're going to leave that to dry. Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> Most of this now is dry. I've just put in a few, um, lifted out some paint with a, a chisel edge flat brush. You've seen me do that before. And I have clipped the paper down where the paint has dried. So, but the paper's still stretched and it's, I just do this so that it can't cockle whilst keeping the bottom half of this still wet. I'm just taking my mop brush and breaking it open and into the burnt sienna. Just going to add and we have to leave each individual layer to dry in watercolour it's not unless you want it to all merge together if that's the effect you're looking for but I'm not some wispy bushes out here just darken off the bottom area burnt sienna cobalt blue Taking a, a damp round brush, just pulling that colour into the land. This just attaches them. Also along the bottom, I just want to drop in a little bit of darks and allow this to spread up as well and uh, go really where it wants with just a little going up. I've just thickened up the yellow ochre and light red mix, and I'm just going to run this up the tree trunks, rotating the brush as I go. Same to this one, same to all three. And then with the cobalt blue and burnt umber, I just want to create a knobbly effect of where the bark is along this tree same on this one I'm I'm just allowing this to drift across very slowly and I think we'll make this one here at the end a dead pine <clears throat> then with your really rich dark mixture Prussian blue and sepia I haven't got too much paint on the brush because I don't want this to spread too far so I'm just touching the left hand side of these trees then with my bigger mop brush this is the mixture of yellow ochre and light red I can begin put some foliage on these trees bringing it across the tree trunk and we just want to leave that to dry for a moment my rigger brush and I want to pull this pine tree out and 
as you can see I'm just adding some structure to the bushes in the background. Now we have to leave this to dry off a little bit so we can complete the trees. Okay now that's dried off a bit <clears throat> I'm just going to move into some cobalt blue and burnt sienna. So it's on the brown side but it's like a very grey sort of a browny grey colour. Touching it on the undersides of the foliage here just to give a little bit of depth. Try not to get carried away and cover up your other layer. You don't want to do that. Moving into my darks, I'm just adding some of this sepia and Prussian blue to that um, last mixture <coughs> for the trees. Just to darken it so I can bring some branches out. Darkening it once again, the back area of the tree as we come down. Adding some of the dark now to the <clears throat> left hand side of the tree once again just to emphasize the tree. Pull the branches over the other one. Adding some of the dark to the bottom here. some of the burnt sienna then with a damp brush to pull this down into the ground straightforward yellow ochre and just pull the dark back blue and sepia using my rigger brush and the uh, sepia and Prussian blue just going to pull one or two sticks out keep the bottom half of my paper wet all the time now I'm taking some of the sky colour which is Sievers blue and cobalt blue and I'm flattening it out and taking the excess paint off it all the way across until we get a hit and miss effect just for some shine and once we have that <coughs> we can just bring it into here all horizontal strokes some of the darker grey, cobalt blue, some light red just a touch, Sievers blue. Before we put the reflections in uh, we're going to have to leave this just to dry a little bit just so the shine is just disappearing off it and then we can put the reflections in and complete the painting. Okay hopefully you can see that there's just tiny bit of sheen left on this paper so I'm just going to test it. What I've done is taken some of this cloud colour and there's very very little paint on this. I've taken all the excess off. I want it very pale as it goes in. Turning into grey. Some down here as well. Then with the rigor brush or some of your background tree colour test it so it doesn't run too far okay well that will do I just want to pull some reflections of this out now I've got the tree trunks in roughly just a little of the background bushes this is burnt sienna dropping this in along the shoreline, sepia and burnt umber. 
just adding a little at a time. And just a little bit of the yellow ochre in there, light red. Mingling it with the other colour. Just a tiny bit of hints of bush reflections here. Some yellow ochre. Just a hint of bushes here. Not much. And back to your darks once again, Prussian blue and sepia. Back to this grey colour once again. Three little birds. Okay, just before we finish up on this, what I want to do is just put some um, sparkle lines or wind streaks into the water area. So I've got a, a ruler here and a small craft blade. And I'm just going to break this up. all adds a little bit more interest in your painting and I want one in this deep area here but don't go wild with this if you've enjoyed this video please click the like button and subscribe and I do encourage you to leave comments I might just put one more here I think So should you wish to leave a comment, you're quite welcome to do so. Then we get round to the best bit. I'm just going to, I've already signed it but it's faded a little bit so I don't want to sign it again. If you've enjoyed this video, thank you very much. Please subscribe and if you'd like to see other videos that I've made for YouTube, watercolour painting videos, I will leave a link in the description box and if you click on that link, it will take you straight to them. Once again, thank you very much for watching.